Yeah, good day there. I'm off work at the moment with a busted foot. So I thought I'd uh, use my time and make another unscripted, poorly made video for you. <clears throat> and today it's going to be on the intercooler fans and the uh, bracketry that I have just made up for that. Now there's going to be some naysayers and you'll notice that I haven't cut out the areas here where the fans don't sit to allow airflow through there. That'll be the first thing everybody talks about or messages me about. Uh, but there's a very good reason for that, which I will go into after I show you how I made this bracket. Now the reason I made this bracket myself is because to buy one of these costs you anywhere upwards of $1,200, $1,300. And I happen to have the fans already. Um, I've experimented around a lot with um, intercoolers in the past and uh, you know placement of fans and design of the brackets so I figured I'd have a crack at it myself it's actually worked out pretty good as always there's some things on there that I'd do differently but all in all I'm pretty happy with how it worked out so uh, I got a little pictorial of uh, how I went about it just for those who are interested uh, so here it is so first I went out and got myself some 3mm aluminium marked out the fans marked out the outside edges of the intercooler and there's the uh, initial marks then I worked out what area I wanted to cut out how much underlap I wanted under the fan as you can see measured it all up finished marking it out and that's how it looked put some little scribbles on there so I didn't cut out the wrong bits now these bits here I'm not cutting out and we'll explain that later I guess. So here we go. Cutting aluminium or working with aluminium is a little bit like working with water. It's not the easiest uh, material to cut and work with. Um, use coarse blades. Mask it up so you don't scratch it pieces. And there's the, the finished rough cut product. So then we start cleaning it up, use a few air tools there, you can use whatever you like, files, whatever you got. Marked out the holes, center punched them so they're right in the right spot. Put a uh, hallmark on there, mark the front of it. Started sanding it up, did a test fit. All went in pretty good. Yep, there it is without the fans. A little uh, tab on there for the relay. Cleaned it up a little bit. Took all the big scratches out of it. Did another test fit. Had a beer because I deserved it. Alrighty, so just uh, put the, the that bit on there just to make sure it was all going to fit right. Needed to make a bracket for the thermostat. So I like to use cardboard templates for that. That way you can lay them out. You can mark out exactly what you need on your piece of sheet using one mil sheet for this. Rough cut it out, then started to form it up. Pretty simple stuff. Just banged it into shape with a hammer. There's the rough finished product. Whacked a, a little bit of a weld on there, as you'll see coming up. That's where it's going to sit under the intercooler. There's the weld. Alright, kind of sunk the holes so that the seal sat flush on the top of this plate so that we didn't get too much leakage. Put a little bit of foam on the edges also to stop the air from leaking out. Wired her all up. Always use a bit of anti-seize. Stainless doesn't like aluminium, it binds together. I like to use copper grease, I couldn't find it at the time. I will change it. That's the bracket all finished up and painted. Put a little bit of foam under there to stop the air from leaking out. That is the bracket for the thermostat in place with the relay being wired up. And that's it all done and dusted. Alrighty, so it was a pretty simple process. Didn't take long to do. Um, all in all, it cost me 
about four or five hundred bucks as opposed to the twelve or thirteen hundred bucks I would have paid for one um, professionally made. Now uh, the reason why I haven't cut out those little segments for the you know where the fan doesn't actually sit is a very good reason let me show you why. Now air will always follow the path of least resistance. Intercooler is, has got quite high resistance it's got all those coils and bits and bobs in there which are there for the cooling process. When you try to force air down onto a high resistive area it's going to start pushing air out of these gaps that you've got. If I was to cut those sections out all I would be doing is pushing a large volume of air out of those gaps and a very small volume of air through the intercooler. Now if I block those gaps like this, with the plate all the way around and some foam on the sides to stop the air escaping, this gap in here pressurizes, leaving the air only one way to go. So you're actually forcing all of your air through the intercooler, which makes a lot more sense. And I've experimented with this um, on, on numerous occasions, and I always find that the thing runs cooler. Uh, with those gaps blocked up. Now, some of the models that are sold actually have this fan sitting hard against the intercooler, which solves that problem also. But then you're losing this section of uh, space, really, uh, in those idle situations where you haven't got the, the fast moving air coming through where you're doing 100 k's an hour, uh, to nothing. So you really, Minimising the uh, uh, you know, your percentage of airflow through your intercooler, I find that this is probably the best method. Having that gap in there, pressurising that gap, you're forcing a heap of air through there. The fan draws a lot more air through uh, than than you can just naturally pushing it through anyway. I uh, really find this is the best method. So why do we even need these fans? Well. When you're shooting down the freeway at 100 k's an hour or 130 if you're in the Northern Territory, it's not such a big problem because the bonnet scoop's scooping up all that air. They got that rubber grommet around there. It's pushing all that air down through the intercooler, keeping everything nice and cool, keeping your performance up. If you're in low range and you're pushing really hard, you're not moving very fast, but the vehicle's working very, very hard. Motor starts to get pretty hot. You're not getting any airflow through there because you're only going slow, low range. So you want these fans there, and I believe they should have probably put them on, uh, you know, that factory. But uh, in any case, most 79 owners put them on after. So you put them on there, thermostat kicks in when it starts getting too hot. They're pretty high powered fans, so they really force a lot of air through that intercooler and start to cool everything back down again. And that is the reason that uh, most of us put them on there. As always, feel free to disagree with me. I like to learn. I like to, uh, you know, learn new stuff and know how things work. So, you know, if you're a mechanic out there, and I know a lot of mechanics don't like to comment on these things, we all like to know. So uh, that's how I've set this thing up. It seems to work pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure about the thermostat position, but we'll play with that as time goes on, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.